All right. Uh, so thanks, Corey. Uh, my name is David Owens, uh, extension entomologist. And on the wagon with y'all is my right hand, Morgan Malone. Morgan, say hi. Uh, Morgan is responsible for some really pretty looking cantaloupes this year. Uh, this this field that we've got here is a cucumber beetle trial. Uh, in melons, we've got three major pest groups, cucumber beetles, rind worms, the LEP complex, and um, spider mites. I had to think for a moment because there's a, a whole bunch of sporadic pests that get into vine crops. But uh, in, in watermelons, especially uh, uh, larger fields, uh, spider mites will come in early. We are moving out of spider mite weather. Uh, but we've got a nice flush of cucumber beetles coming in. So uh, cucumber beetles, uh, this time of year, we are worried about them causing damage to the rinds. Uh, it's mostly a cosmetic issue. It does not affect the flavor. Uh, but the problem with cucumber beetles that we've been running into is we're having an increasingly difficult time killing them. So these leaves here were treated just this afternoon. And we put five cucumber beetles from this field on these treated leaves. These petri dishes that I'm passing out were treated with brigade which in the commercial vegetable recommendation guide is one of the products recommended for cucumber beetles. And you can see these beetles are happy running around inside the Petri dish. They should be dead as doornails by now. Uh, I'm going to pass out uh, carbaryl treated uh, beetles. Now, generally, I do not recommend carbaryl for cucumber beetle control. And the reason is carbaryl is extremely toxic to honeybees and to bumblebees. And in vine crops, those pollinators are critical to making a crop. In this trial, we treated our cantaloupes early in the season in June with admire in the drip, with platinum in the drip, with veramark in the drip and then foliar applications of Brigade and Hero. We only got good beetle kills from the Admire and the Platinum treated uh, f uh, field plots. Starting around the third week of, second week of July, we've been treating foliarly uh, with a sale with Harvanta and with an experimental product from Syngenta that hopefully will be coming out onto market sometime 2024 or 2025. Um, and we've been also testing beetle populations from across Delmarva. Uh, we've gotten beetles from Salisbury, from Concord here on station, from Bridgeville, and from Lincoln. And every one of the populations that we've tested has had very low susceptibility to our pyrethroids. We've tested Bifenthrin, we've tested Hero, we've tested Warrior, we've tested Besiege very low efficacy from the pyrethroids. They don't feed on the leaves as much when they're in these petri dishes that have been treated. It's like the, there's a repellency effect pushing those beetles off of the treated leaves. But that's a problem because in a field, you're not going to cover every surface of that plant. Right now, our best labeled products in the summer are Lanate, Carbaryl, and Asale. Lanate is also extremely toxic, both to people and to pollinators. Uh, a sale is, is much more gentle on both. Uh, and we get excellent beetle kill from a sale. One of the other minor issues that we do run into, and I think I lost my, my melon here that had it. Uh, when we were picking these the other day, we had a wireworm come up through the oh here it is we had a wireworm come up through the plastic and poke a hole in our cantaloupe and i'm afraid there's not a whole lot we can do about that the other um insect pest that we do a lot of work with uh on the research station is corn earworm and sweet corn uh we're going to discuss that a lot more next week. Uh, we've got a, a couple of demonstration plots that will soon be harvestable. 
Um, but is anyone currently growing sweet corn? Any hands? Some? Some? Okay. So this summer, we've had a pretty low error pressure. Uh, Morgan helped me harvest 1,200 ears of sweet corn last week, and we graded it for worm damage. I had a grand total of six earworms. In our untreated, we were averaging about one and a half percent. Uh, so that's like one worm out of a hundred. Yeah, okay. uh, very depressing to me as an entomologist. <laughs> <laughs> that, that picture is quickly changing. Uh, we have pheromone traps scattered across the state. We've got a dozen trapping locations. Um, and just in the last two nights, three nights, we've been catching a significant moth flight. Traps here on station have been getting between four and 50 moths a night. A trap five minutes from here caught 81 last night. And traps in, down in uh, Eastern Shore of Virginia and Painter have been catching several hundred per night for the last three nights. So our, our earworm pressure is very quickly ramping up and we need to, need to tighten our spray intervals on sweet corn. Lower, earlier in the year, because I had a plant that should have been being sprayed around the 9th of June. I went away for a week, missed one spray, and that's the most worms I've seen all year. Yeah, yeah. So typically we do get an early June flight, and that affects the July 4th sweet corn window. Uh, and then as we move into the third week of June, the, the pressure really drops. And this year it's been extremely quiet until the last couple of days. Our, our worm flight in a typical year builds up in the last third of July. And this year we're about 10 days late, but they are coming. Uh, there are rewards to working in hot vegetable fields all summer and working on black plastic and counting spider mites and bending over and counting cucumber beetles uh, twice a week for four weeks. This is, well, this is one of them. <laughs> and my crew is kind enough to pick a few extras if anyone wants some cantaloupes. Can I interest anyone in a cantaloupe? <laughs> oh, yes, yes. I will gladly take the plug. Hey, uh, Morgan, can you give me a hand here real quick? Yep. Thank you. Watch out for the ones on the top. <laughs> Uh, I saw a, a rind was uh, uh, damaged on one of those. Before I let y'all go. <coughs> yes. Okay, great. All right. Yeah, yeah. If anyone wants another uh, cantaloupe and doesn't have enough in that basket, I've got plenty. Just raise your hand. All right. The carrot's got a worm in it or what? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that's got a Japanese beetle feeding on it. So the other pest that uh, we're starting to pick up in low numbers this year, and I don't anticipate major issues with it, is beet armyworm. Bee armyworm really loves pigweeds. If you've got pigweeds, uh, especially around peppers um, or cabbages, that's very attractive to beet armyworm. Bee armyworms are resistant to our pyrethroid applications. What they'll do on pigweeds is they will they lay an egg mass near the top of the plant. When that egg mass hatches, the larvae will, will web up the top of the plant and feed on that, and then they'll disperse. Yeah, yeah, you, you can take that. So beet armyworm is resistant to pyrethroids. So it's uh, it's helpful to be able to get a good ID on your worm complex. Um, in melons, worms will scar up rinds just like cucumber beetles will. It looks a little bit different. You better get that. that. Nobody wants it. On, on watermelon, cucumber beetle feeding will look dirty. Whereas caterpillar feeding will have a very nice, smooth gray appearance to it. Uh, like just very smooth. Uh, on cantaloupe, it's a little bit harder to tell the difference, but it's important to be able to identify what the, 
what the pest is, because a sail is not effective on the worms. Our best worm materials are not very effective on cucumber beetles, save Harvanta. And that one's kind of set up on cucumber beetles. It will affect them, but not to the extent that a sail will. Uh, and then in our worm complex, some worms are harder to kill with insecticides and others are very easy to kill with insecticides. The other pests that uh, we have trials on station uh, are uh, diamondback moths. And we have not been having the weather for diamondback moths. They're there, they're in our fields, but in low numbers. They really like hot, dry weather. And we haven't had too much of either. Um, diamondback moths can be very resistant to insecticides, but it's very local, very regional. Uh, New Jersey has a hard time killing them with diamide insecticides like Corrigin. Uh, here on, in Georgetown, we can make some really pretty cabbage spraying Corrigin. There are other spots in the state where we can't control them with corrigin. Uh, so it's uh, it's important to be able to identify the, the worm complex. Beet armyworm will get into cabbage and it can be hard to kill. Um, it is resistant to the pyrethroids. Corrigin should do a good job on it. Um, Every now and then I get photos from people that are like, why didn't Warrior kill this worm? Beat army worm is why. Here's another uh, cantaloupe that has a, a wire worm hole in it. And you can tell it's a wire worm because it's right on the ground spot. Best way to kill wire worms is right before you lay plastic with diazinol. Besides that, we don't have a lot of good wireworm material. And diazinon is uh, pretty nasty stuff to, to handle. Any other questions on, on vegetable insect pests and, and yes. vine crops? Yes. Egg masses that you see out there with like earworm that laid the eggs, you can actually see those eggs, you know, sitting there waiting to be hatched. Is there anything that you can spray on those eggs to help that be wipe those eggs out? Eggs are right. Right. eggs are impervious. They're they're they are designed to protect the developing caterpillar. Uh, no insecticide is going to cross that eggshell and the and the chorion to get to the developing embryo. Yeah, yeah, we know they hatch. They yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, goats. <laughs> You've got to give them the brain <laughs> The um, actually. Since you mentioned egg masses, that's a, another good one. We have a lot of harlequin bug pressure in our cabbage this year on station. Um, and another major pest that a lot of folks run into is squash bug. Both of them will lay egg masses and they're two spray pests. You spray them once to kill off all the adults. And then about 10 days later, you spray them again to kill off all the nymphs that have hatched out of those eggs. Pyrethroids do a very good job on, on both. Yeah. Now, does that also do good for the vine worm, maggot worm that gets in? The, the only materials that we have in our recommendation guide are pyrethroids. It's very difficult to get good efficacy data on squash vine borer. It's a it's a ten plant pest. It will reliably destroy ten plants mm -hmm. in a field. In my back garden, it'll take out every single zucchini plant that I plant. And when I plant a field of zucchini, it'll fairly reliably take out five of them. And usually in the where I don't need them. Yeah. My guard row, yeah. not my entry to check row. It's just, it's a very difficult pest to get good data on. But the, the key for, for that, for squash bug, even for cucumber beetle, you need to get the spray material onto the base of the plants. Cucumber beetles will move down and, and hide near the planting holes. Squash bugs are notorious for that. Uh, squash vine borer will lay its eggs on the underside of leaves, and those larvae will, will very quickly worm their way into the vine. The, the nice thing about squash vine borer is it's active during the daytime. So we can see them, and then we can, we can do a revenge spray on them. It makes me feel good. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else have questions on insects and vegetables? All these corn 
earworm moths that you're finding in the traps, when do you think those eggs will be hatched out and they'll be laying here soon? They they will be the they will be laying now, yes. Okay. So uh, it takes those eggs about two days to hatch. Mm -hmm. Takes that worm another day to get through the silk channel. So if you miss a spray by, you know, right now I rec I'm recommending folks to be on a two day to three day spray schedule, uh, depending on what they sprayed last. And the reason being our pyrethroids by themselves are very inconsistent, especially on this late flush of moths that we get coming from the south. Uh, we tend to have a higher level of pyrethroid resistance this time of year. Um, and those caterpillars, once they get into the silk channel, we can't touch them. Um, huge warrior forever for, for the worms, but um, I had a job where I ran four days and all four days, and sooner or later I'd have a two day spray and a five day spray. So, how I saw it, I started putting Dipel in with my warrior, mm -hmm. Dallas Calvary, and uh, I can pretty much stay on a four day cycle until they get too heavy. I think that Dipel is buying me some time. Do you think it's working at all? I mean, it seems to. I stayed on I did it for 15, 20 years. Yeah. And it seemed to help. It, it will certainly help with fall armyworm. That will lay its egg masses on the leaves and on the husks. Um, and then those caterpillars kind of wander around the plants before they get into the ears. Um, we do have some fall armyworm pressure. Uh, my sweet corn planting across the road has about 9%. Um, as far as earworms, the BTs will have an effect on them, but it's not a great one. Not one that I would recommend running out and spraying. Yeah. So you're saying they kind of crawl in without eating their way in? Mm-hmm. Okay. If they're not eating, they're not buying. Right. Yeah. Organic research. Have you done much of that up this way? Or not, not as much, no. It's difficult to do that. Say it. It's one of those things that also, uh, uh, I don't mean this to be offensive, the squeaky wheel gets my attention, and I have only had one phone call in the last five years from somebody trying to grow organic produce. If y'all are growing organic produce and running into insect pest issues, I'm more than happy to help you, work with you, uh, visit your farm, and then start putting in spray trials for it. The other thing that, that hurts us is we don't have a whole lot of organic products. Um, so there are other entomologists that do a lot of spray trials with them. So I feel fairly confident in their data. And I just haven't I haven't put as much effort on it. Our best organic worm product is Entrust. How do you spell that? Uh, E-N-T-R-U-S-T. Okay. Thank you. And then BTs and other crops. Um, BT works great in, in stuff like cabbages and, and, and kales, where you get good coverage. Anyone get a cantaloupe that, or anyone still want a cantaloupe? Okay, I have a three three more things you have to listen to me talk about. Okay, one, just a few more details about the meeting that's next week on Thursday. Okay. Um, it starts at 5.30, goes till 7.30. Um, Mark Van Gessel is going to be demoing his, his turtle uh, weeder thing. It's like a weed Roomba. And uh, David's going to be talking about sweet corn. I'll be sharing the things that I didn't talk about tonight. Um, and Alyssa is going to show uh, some research that she has on some biological products um, in cucumbers and melons. And yeah, there'll be stuff out of the fruit demo to look at. So if you want to come to that, there's going to be postcards up in the grove where we have food after this, so you can look for one of those. And I want to introduce my technician who got hired. Where'd he go? Okay, he's over there. Rob. So Rob just started in July. I was able to hire him because of a big lima bean project that I'm on, but uh, we're, he's going to work on stuff up there. He hopes so. 
um, and so he just started and looking forward to having him on board. And then I mentioned that we're a little thin on the veggie team. So the we have a candidate coming in uh, for the vegetable extension agent on Friday. If, if you happen to want to have nothing to do at 1030 in the morning on Friday and wanted to hear um, that candidate who's coming in to be the vegetable extension agent the statewide responsibility. So that would be my old position replacement. Um, you can come in and hear her seminar. What's the date and time of that vegetable tour again? Uh, the vegetable tour is August 17th, next Thursday. All right. It's at 5.30. 5.30 to 7.30, there's sweet at the beginning. <laughs> there will also be sweet corn to eat of a particularly Excellent bicolor variety. May or may not have a worm in it. Um, uh, do I still have petri dishes on the on the wagon here? Yes. Can I get those back? That way I can uh, officially count them as live or dead tomorrow morning. Thank you. Thank you for oh, you're welcome. The working with vegetables is a lot of work, and uh, very rewarding. I asked my crew last year what vegetable would entertain them. Somebody said cantaloupe. Somebody said honeydew. And I'm not a huge fan of honeydew, so we went with cantaloupe. And then my cantaloupe person left. So now I've got I've got honeydew people on my on my crew this year. Sorry. <laughs> Try diplomat. It's in the honeydew family, but it slips like a cantaloupe. Okay. It's twice as sweet as most honeydew I ever tried to grow locally. And uh, I mean, twice as sweet like that. Mm -hmm. you know, it'll, it'll hold a day or two. Where the old honeydews, you almost had to wait till they were rot before they were ripe. So they're fine lines, they break the pot. Morgan, diplomat for honeydews next year. Thank you. And you know how superstar cantaloupes disappeared off the market that we grew for 45 years? I ran my own trial three years ago, and one I found, and I picked one today, it was probably this big around, it's called Solstice, like something up there. And um, it's actually that thick from the edge of the grind to the top. I got a cutting knife that long, it won't hardly go through it to cut it. I had a quart container, and I thought it would hold it, they got half. I tried another container, and it only held two thirds of the other half, <laughs> so I had to pull it up. It's, but it's called Solstice, and, and uh, I don't think it's been around a lot. I don't think anybody has got around it. It's a rib cantaloupe. It has about a, a good two day shelf life for fresh market. Okay. You know, the, you know, the Athena's the old standby. But that's not, that's more shippable. The other problem that I've been having in my cantaloupe field over here is I've, I had uh, frog eggs at the very back corner in my plots yesterday. Frog eggs. Is that a bad thing? <laughs> Standing water. Oh, okay, okay. Have tadpoles next week. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Some of them, yes. They did. They did. Yeah. 